Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me. Now that we've talked about all these different management approaches to pine stands and even some hardwood management stands, let's look at a hypothetical property. Suppose this is your property. It's almost all forested. You have some small areas where you could put in some food plots, very small areas, but mostly it's forested and you want to do something for your deer population. Let's break out the different types of forested lands on your property. Here are four mixed hardwood stands. There's no real commercial value. You're not going to get someone to come in and and harvest any of these hardwoods, they're just there. And you also have some pine stands, pine plantations. Maybe 30 years ago or 20 years ago, those plantation areas were actually agricultural fields. And you took them out of production, had them planted into pine stands. So suppose you have these four pine stands and you want to manage them to improve habitat quality and hunting opportunities. So what you'd want to consider doing is distributing and scheduling prescribed fire to promote diversity across your property. So in this scenario, the four stands, the yellow stand, let's say we're going to burn that the first year. The orange stand in the opposite corner of your property, you're going to burn the second year. The red stand, you're going to burn the third year and that stand happens to be split by some hardwoods, but you're just going to manage and burn the, the pine stand year three, and then year four you go out and burn that fourth pine stand. So you have now a one-year growing season burn, a two-year post-burn growing season, three-year post-burn, and a four-year post-burn. And then you come back in four years later and you reburn. The stand that you burned year one. So year five you come in and burn the yellow stand. And so you're re-establishing fire at a four-year fire return interval which is going to be great for deer and also benefit your turkeys. And it's just a great way to distribute and vary the habitat quality across your property. Now suppose you wanted to vary it a little bit more and further diversify. Suppose that year one you do a dormant season burn in February and then a growing season burn in June. And we've already talked about how those are promoting high protein and phosphorus levels at different times during that first growing season. And then those patterns change some the second growing season. But then year two you do a dormant burn in the orange stand and a growing season burn in the other half of the orange stand. Year three, you do a dormant season burn in February, and then you do a growing season burn in June. And then year four, same thing. The dormant season burn in half, growing season burn in the other half. So now, instead of just having four stages of plant communities, you have eight different pieces of your land that are producing protein and phosphorus and other nutrients at slightly different times of the year and that is changing over time in all of your four stands. So you've created great diversity across your property. Now, perhaps you've seen Marcus Lashley's video on the MSU Deer Lab YouTube channel titled Bow Range Burning. And here he shows how you can use a, a battery operated leaf blower to actually create a fire line. He calls it bow range burning because he's doing it around a tree that he wants to bow hunt out of. And he's doing this not during dormant season, but during September within the area that you've created the dormant season burns in. And so you're creating a September burn that's going to immediately re-sprout and come October you have really fresh re-sprouts from that small localized burn patch that is going to be highly attractive to your deer. 
and you're going to draw them in to your bow stand basically during October. Now suppose you wanted to further diversify your plants. We've shown you how mineral stumps, mechanical stump sprouting, can be used to really provide a localized food supply. And so you start putting those also into some of your dormant season burns. But even more importantly, you go into those hardwoods where you had no active management and you create some stump sprouts in your hardwoods. You do it in June. Maybe you go back out and do it some, some in August to create some re-sprouts from June are going to be used in July and August and, and maybe not as much in September, but you do it in August and you've got some fresh re-sprouts in September and October for, to really attract your deer. So now you've created a huge amount of diversity across your property and at the level of your property, you've improved your nutritional carrying capacity and locally at the level of your hunting stands, you've improved the forage supply to supplement the forage and also attract them into you. So think about any number of combinations that you could do on your personal property, or if you're just hunting somebody else's property, get the, the landowner's permission before you start cutting down trees.